So we're going to look at a, at a process called the difference of perfect squares. It comes up every now and then. It's not that frequent though, so it's, you have to sort of keep this in the back of your memory. But any time I have two square numbers separated by a subtraction sound, my alarm bells are going off. Okay, there's a pattern there that I need to do something with. Is this a squared number? Yes. Is that a squared number? No. No. Yes. It's, no. Oh, five. Looks like five squared. Five times five, correct? Yes. And I've got a subtraction. So the alarm bells are ringing. But I, I didn't want to do this initially. I wanted to show you quadratics first and how we factorise those because it should make sense once you've seen it. I can set this up exactly like quadratics, right? But I could write this as x plus 0x minus 25, couldn't I? That looks like what we're just doing. Do I need to write 0x? So I'm just going to get rid of that for now, but we know that's there. So what am I looking for? Two numbers that multiply to give me 25 and add to give me Zero. Zero. Okay. So I want two numbers that multiply to give me 25. How many negatives should I have? One. One. So I should have x plus something, x minus something. Hmm? Doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So what are the factors of 25? Five and five? Okay. I need an operation where I've got something minus something equals zero with the factors of 25. Can we figure this one out? Five minus five seems to work for me. So that would mean this is x plus five, x minus five. So that is how difference of perfect squares works. Now it won't always be that obvious. Okay. Do you actually need to know difference of perfect squares for that example? Or could we have figured it out using our old method? We could have used the quadratic method to solve that. You won't always get that leg up because it won't look nice and clean. So for example, I could give you this in an exam. I could say a squared minus b squared, factorise. And you'll sit in there saying, but there are no numbers in that. How can I factorise? I want you now to expand this bracket. a plus b a minus b, and I want you to prove that it equals a squared minus b squared. Expand it. Let's go. Use our crab claws. So we're doing no, you're doing this one here. No, no, this example. I should have done it in a better spot, but that's okay. I'll load up here actually. Alright Jack, you're going to help me out with this one mate, what's A, you don't need the calculator, I haven't seen the A button on the calculator yet, um, A times A, there it is. A squared. very good, A times negative B, Very good. A times positive B. And then negative B times B.
Very good. Is there something we can do? Kiva, can we do something with that? What can we do? Very good. What can we do with the ABs, Keely? Add them together. So what's negative AB plus AB? Think of a number. Think of any number. Two? All right. Positive two minus two. What's that? Zero. Okay, what was your number, Keely? Negative. I said two as well. Okay, five. <laughs> Positive five minus five? So AB minus AB is going to be? So we're left with A squared minus B squared, which equaled A plus B. Well, oh, that's an awful looking A. It's an A and a bracket together. A minus B. We have just proved the difference of perfect squares. Do we need any numbers? Okay, you do not need numbers to make that work. What I want you to do now is to work through um, exercise 5F, question 3. You don't need to solve them, I just want you to factorise them. So it says solve the quadratics, that's just factorising for now.